Hey guys, we've got another image sent in, and this one's been sent in by Jay here. So we're going to go over to his Instagram. We'll talk a little bit about the settings he used to get the shot, and then a bit more about uh, his style and some of the colors that he achieves in his look. So if we come over to his Instagram, uh, you can go give him a follow down in the description. I'll put his links down there. I always do. So go give him a follow down there and let him know that you found him through this tutorial. So. Let's come down, talk a little bit about his style. So straight away you can see there's a lot of vibrance. So those yellow tones and those green tones are really popping out. And then as for shadows, you can see there's a lot of warmth. So I'm thinking of adding in almost a red into the shadows. And then up in the highlights, there's quite a bit of coolness to the image. So probably adding in a teal or a blue there. And if we come down, we're gonna be working with this shot right here. So this was taken on the A7 uh, 3 24 millimeters, so nice and wide, getting in the landscape there and two subjects. Uh, F2.8, so opening right up, a little bit of a uh, shallow depth field happening. Uh, shutter speed of 500, uh, kind of fast to expose the image correctly and a low ISO because it's very bright. So we're going to be working with this one trying to achieve those nice oranges that really pop there's really warm greens back there you see up here you can see those cool highlights and then you can see there's a real fade to the uh, highlights so you can see that on the water how the detail sort of fades away so um yeah i'll put all of his links down in the description guys uh, if you come up here you can check out his blog so if you click, click here so if you come over here you can check out all of his work on his website here but if we just go back to his instagram and yeah let's get over into lightroom and try to achieve something really vibrant kind of flatten the highlights cool highlights warm shadows and nice and sharp and crispy like this so maybe adding some clarity and yeah let's get into it Okay, so here's the raw image that he sent me and then the screenshot from his Instagram. So let's go about achieving this. Let's bring up the exposure just so we have a nice starting point that's a bit more similar. Okay, um, so what I see over and over and over and I say it in most of my videos is drop the highlights and you can see that brings the detail back. You can't really see those mountains like this. So when you drop the highlights you can really see them again so let's do that and shadows really shadowy down here we want to be able to see we want to create this nice warm bright environment so let's chuck up the shadows uh, so we want a little bit of a pop to the image so I'm gonna do about there and then blacks um so i'll hold off that for now so i'm going to do some work in the curves and when i do that it's going to add in a lot of contrast so i actually started off with a preset and uh otherwise so i had the curves to start off with so i'll just drop the contrast a lot add in the curves and then I'll come back to this area of the image and fine tune my contrast. I just wanna put those curves in first. And yeah, let's get into that and then I'll explain why I did what I did with the curves after I've finished them. Okay, so that's the curves done, and I'll just correct a little bit of contrast up here real quick so you guys can just see um, what it's doing exactly. So I, I actually started with this curve. I probably should have started with the red, green, and blue channels, and then what this one does is adds that fade. So I did a nice S curve in each of these channels. 
So this one was just from a preset, like I chucked it on, it looked really good, so I just went with it. And yeah, it was just a general S curve, there's a bit extra in the highlights here, so that's going to add colour into the highlights. So it added red into the highlights, it added green into the highlights, and it added blue into the highlights. So it added the colour, but it also increased the brightness. And um, in this curve, since we have a fade to those highlights, you can really see it in the this area right here and up in the sky. Um, that detail disappears, and that's from dropping this curve here. So you get this almost like, see how the detail just disappeared right there? So you can sort of see, and then bang, that detail starts to disappear. And that's what you can see. So that's why I've dropped the highlights and whites here. And I had to drop it extra because this preset I applied, I liked it because it looked really similar, but it maybe didn't need all this in the highlights, but I just kept it because it was convenient to keep it there. I didn't want to go through and change all these red, green, and blue channels. So this has a lot in the highlights. So I had to drop it extra in this one. And Remember this one is for the colors and contrast um, to get a bit more contrast in the shadows and your colors and then this one you just want to use this curve to achieve your fades so fade in the shadows so we softened up those blacks as well by um, lifting them up a bit and yeah really really dropping those whites and highlights but dropping them extra because we have too much in the red green and blue channels from that preset but it looked good so we kept it okay so um so if we just come back up here here's before and after of the curve so you can see those colors are quite a bit richer we achieved a bit of contrast in there and those colors pop a bit more and then we got that fade you can see um, if we go before the curves here, you can see like we can see the outline of this mountain way back here quite easy. But when we turn on the curve, it's quite hard to see the detail back there. And it's a lot more like his. That detail kind of fades away in the fade. Okay, let's carry on with some editing up here. Let's drop the highlights a bit. So you can, now I think we're perfectly sort of matching up our sky back there, amount of detail highlights will do that also okay um, let's mess around with a few of these lift the blacks up a bit so this image has a lot of punch to it it's vibrant but it also has a lot of crispiness and texture to it so textures new to Adobe Lightroom and it, it's kind of like clarity, but doesn't affect the brightness as much. We're going to add quite a bit in there. You can really see it if you look at the, the hair, for example. And then clarity, you can see how that... It's, it's slightly different effect. I don't know how to describe it different, but you can see how that just adds a real crispiness to our image. And then it kind of dulls our image down a bit, like takes away a little bit of that color. But if we bump up the vibrance now, and then we look a little too saturated, let's maybe bring down some saturation here. Okay, looking pretty good. Um, If we come all the way down, let's do some colors now. So if we come all the way down to calibration, again, this was just from one of my presets that I thought looked really close and similar to his image already. So I just rolled with it and it just had these settings. I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know exactly what I'm doing down in calibration. I don't think many people do, but I'm gonna um, bring up all these orange tones, um, green primary, Sort of just trying to keep it natural by warm and warming everything up at the same time. We'll drop the teals. We'll up those colors. So again, this was from a preset and I thought it looked really close to what he already had. So I just rolled with it. I don't know. 
I couldn't tell you exactly why I shifted each of those. Okay, um, now let's do split toning. And I did split toning because you can see the amount of blue. So if you look like here, 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 up, up here as well, we can see there's a real teal. Um, our blues are almost teal. Like if you look down here, we're almost the right colors. They need a different brightness. But you can see even in the grass, it's like way more blue. So in split toning, we need to add in a lot of that to the highlights. So I'm going to grab the highlights. I'm going to get this nice tealy blue that we see here, light blue. Add quite a bit in. Now our image looks too blue, like the whole image just looks cold. So what I want is in the shadows. So if you look in areas like the darker areas like this, maybe the back of her hat, this bag here, you can see that it's way warmer. And that means I'm gonna add in a nice red. I'm gonna go about to 10. And now I think we've got too much red throughout the entire image. And I could bring the red down, but then uh, I, I just I just don't think it gets red enough in those real dark places. So what I'm going to do is shift the balance in this direction, and that means I'm going to keep more of these reds I've introduced more in the blacks. Because at the moment it's just 50% highlights, 50% shadows. I'm going to push a bit more of those blues over into the shadows, but I'll still be affecting the darker shadows down here. So I'm going to shift that to about here, and that's keeping those nice warm um, shadows in the darker areas and just introducing a bit more highlights. So now we're a bit more blue, like if you look in th these spots up in the sky, I'll just reset it before and after. So I think those colors are a lot closer now. And if we just, um, let's just jump to sharpening. So whereabouts are we? Detail. Um, oh, I already did it, so I, I forgot to reset it before I did this tutorial. So it's at 99, so if I just reset it now. So that's what it would be at default. And yeah, this image is really crispy and sharp. I'm going to try up at 99. And then uh, the detail, it starts to look a little too sharp, a little like the texture to the hair, for example, starts to not look very nice or starts to look different to his. So masking, if you hold option, you can see exactly where it's sharpening. So if we lift it a long way up, let's say to where it was at here, now it's just gonna be sharpening the thick lines and that's gonna really, it's gonna keep our image looking nice and soft in some areas, but those hard edges those big edges, those thick edges are going to be nice and sharp. So it's going to be like their hats, for example, are really going to pop. And it's going to keep like the water back there nice because it's a, th a really thin line. It's not going to get sharpened, but those thick edges will make, uh, the, make their subjects pop, for example. Okay, um, we are good. Let's move on to HSL. So we need to play with the saturation of some of these colors so some obvious ones the oranges our oranges really stand out in this image so i'm gonna bump them up to about there and then our yellows so let's see where our yellows are affecting the grass and stuff so if you look down here you can see um we look a lot colder over in his image in the grass. So we, so that could either be the greens. Drop the greens down. And then, um, yeah, we, we still do have a bit of greens there, but it could also be the yellows because the yellows affect a lot of the greens. So I'm going to drop the yellows. And if you have a lot of oranges, it can sometimes be a good thing to drop the yellows and then those oranges since in an image the yellows can be they're very very often right next to an orange 
if you drop the yellows out, those oranges are gonna seem even more brighter and pop even more out of the image. If you know what I mean. Uh, a bit more in the saturation, so these blues in the blanket, they can come down quite a bit. I might even brighten them, you can see that they're really bright. I might brighten them in luminance. I'll just do that now, so you can see, you might think I need to desaturate them more, because they, they look different somehow. So we desaturate them, they still look different somehow. It's because of the luminance, the brightness of the blues has been brought up. So it takes a wee while to see the difference between like desaturating stuff and bringing up the brightness of stuff. It can look quite similar, but eventually you'll you'll start to see the difference. So luminance to make them nice and bright and pop, and then the aquas will also affect that. So you you'll have to think. See the blues and the aquas affect the same area. So you've got to be thinking about working with both. Okay, um, the greens, luminance of the greens. You can see down here in the grass, they're a bit, it's a bit brighter and desaturated. Let's bring them up. And overall, he has a very, here's lots of greens in his images and a very overall warm image. So I'm going to bring them up. Um, let's go back to saturation. Let's look at some purples. So there's just little bits in the blanket here. So all you have to do is just look at them and match them up. So I think we can bring it down. Magenta, same thing. So this little spot right here is where magenta is. Just gonna match it up with the other image. Looks like we could just bring it down a touch that okay so um, luminance uh, oranges so this shirt looks a little brighter and it it's very saturated but we want it to pop a bit same with a bag here we just we just want them to pop so see how that just makes all those orange colors pop we'll just bring it up a little okay right and then the luminance of the yellows. So usually I'm almost always bringing up the luminance of the yellows, but I think he might have dropped the luminance of the yellows and it kind of creates a deepness and a flatness to the image because you expect the yellows to be kind of bright, but then he's kind of dropping the yellows and the luminance. I think it looks more similar if I drop the luminance the yellows so that's the brightness of the yellows there you see if I just leave them up the, the image kind of looks washed out a little but if I drop them it adds a deepness to the to the brighter areas of the image and yeah I'm gonna roll with that kind of creates a flatness to the image but in terms of color okay I think we're good there so HSL um, we look pretty good on our colors already so um our reds could maybe look a little more orange we look at almost a purple over here and slightly more orange in his let's go there our oranges we maybe look a little too dark let's try that our greens we could warm up our greens a touch because you can see these trees are almost orange. Our blues, so our aquas are this um, really, really teal, teal blue. And that, a lot of that's from split toning, and then we will just do a little bit from the aquas, aqua here. So if we look at this blanket, it can really match them up well. And then we'll just shift to this brighter greenier blue by shifting the hue of these ones here and then you can really see that changes the tone of the color here up in the mountain you can see that's much more closer to what he has oh, it's the saturation i mean so this way it's like a purple 
and you can see he has a he has a blue back there a light blue so going in this direction and the purples so it's, this is only very 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 slight down in the blanket not many purples I think a warmer one it looks a little more on the red side and yeah I think we're good so come back up um, yeah I think that is all we've got there and so if you guys okay so there's our before and after for now and so in terms of filters and brushes I reckon one right here that's affecting our subjects here and I forgot to reset it before I started this tutorial so my bad but I didn't want to re re-record this whole tutorial so I'll just show you what I would have done so I just reset that so as you can see we just want our subjects to stand out a little more so uh, just a bit more brightness this photo might have been sponsored for these backpacks or something I'm not sure we want to bring it out there the subjects anyway these people are the subjects let's bring out the middle of that image by some highlights bring up the highlights right there and then I did the same with a brush so if I just grab the brush so if I press O it will show me everywhere where I've brushed so I wanted to bring out the hair a bit make it shine a bit so I just press O again I wanted to bring out all these areas and make them shine a little bit more they were brighter than other areas of the image so I knew they were they were brought up um, using uh, brushes and then the bags as well just brushed over them a bit and then it's just exposure coming up okay so I'm about happy with this and what I'll show you guys is if we just come over here and create a preset out of these settings so if we just go call it toot one for now um, don't want filters white balance is optional and we'll go create and if we just get up the image that we are going to be working with in our next tutorial so this is his image as well so here's the unedited version of it and if we just come over to uh, presets come down to two one and then if we up the warmth maybe up the contrast a little and then if we play around with the balance so as you can see there's a lot of blues in the image let's just shift more of those reds throughout the image and let's bring down the exposure maybe drop the contrast again up the warmth And you can see we're getting kind of close to what we had maybe drop the clarity um, yeah and you can see there's a few reds in there so maybe shift the reds to a bit more of an orange but yeah we'll go through this tutorial in another one but I just wanted to show you how especially those blues you can really see um, the split toning really helps us get those and yeah so there's the before and after really quick and easy you can see where there's still more to do but um, that's just how quick and easy you can start to get on the right track of those really nice blues that it gets there in the highlights and yeah I'll just leave it there guys we'll just go back to the one we were working with and yeah I think I'm pretty happy with that one guys maybe a few more whites could be a bit more of a punch to it maybe um, but I'll just leave it there I think we're really really close there and yeah comment down below who you guys want to see so comment people who don't have many followers but have really great images so that they will send in their photos for me to do a tutorial on and 
check out the um, all of his work guides i'll be putting all of his links down in the description he's got really great work so go down there give him a follow let him know you found him through these tutorials and yeah check out the presets if you're liking these tutorials guys um heaps of awesome feedback on those and yeah i'll catch you guys in the next one thanks for watching leave a like leave a comment and see you later